Good morning to our viewers on the West Coast and good evening to our viewers in Tehran. I'm Nikosar and this is Iranistas in Washington, D.C. Many political experts consider Iran, of course, the Iranian regime, an animal farm of its own. But if George Orwell were alive today, he could have possibly written a new edition of Animal Farm based on the Khomeiniist Islamic Revolution. In the Animal Farm, you read, it was always the pigs who put forward the resolutions. The other animals understood how to vote, but could never think of any resolutions of their own. There are different opinions regarding the elections in Iran, if they're democratic or not democratic. I've talked to Professor Aram Hassami of the Montgomery College of Maryland on this very important issue, if he considers the Iranian regime a democratic regime based on its elections or no, a semi-democratic or non-democratic regime. Professor Aram Hassami, thanks for being on Iranistas. Based on your research and studies on the Iranian elections, would you consider Iran or the Iranian regime a democratic state or a non-democratic state or possibly a semi-democratic state? Uh, well, good question. I think everyone is a million dollar question now. Um, as you know, it's called the Islamic Republic of Iran. So in some respect, it is Islamic and in some respect, it is a republic. The question is, is it in compliance with the basic tenets of democracy? Uh, if you break down democracy into two different types, one we call substantive view of democracy, one we call procedural democracy. Procedural democracy has to do with the process, voting and participation and fair and free election. Substantive view of democracy has to do with in actually uh, in principle, in practice, does this republic comply with the basic tenets of democracy, egalitarian, uh, freedom, liberty, so forth and so on. Well, it doesn't comply. The Islamic Republic does not uh, come, it doesn't come in either side of procedural or substantive view of democracy. But it's a mixture of Islamic jurisprudence and a Republican form of government. Now, as far as the elections are concerned, I, I think the best way I can describe the system or the regime uh, is what I call a closed closed circuit republic. It means it is basically self-contained and it doesn't allow opposition parties or voices to be heard. It is to the extent that it is being uh, called a republic has to do with people choosing representatives to represent them and therefore it can be called a republic. There are, yes, there are debates. Yes, there are uh, participation. Yes, there are uh, hundreds or thousands of newspaper uh, and local uh, 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 stations covering the elections. However, it is not democratic with 21st century standards. And let's talk about uh, how the regime works with its candidates. And it selects a number of candidates out of thousands and uh, these who have been approved by the Guardian Council and the Supreme Leader will run for president and people will have a chance to uh, choose one of them. Do you also consider this democratic or semi-democratic? It is non-democratic. It's not semi-democratic. Look, in order to have the basic, even procedurally, in other words, even if you look at the conditions uh, with which you need to measure a democratic election. Do you have competitive political parties? Do you have alternative agendas? Do opposition groups have representations? Do you have uh, 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 free elections or conditions for free elections? Meaning, do you allow uh, people to uh, uh, peacefully assemble? Do you allow them to uh, form political parties, if you measure democratic or Iran's elections by these standards, no. But don't forget, you're talking about a country in the Middle East that has not experienced democracy since in, you know, thousand, since its inception. So 
to call it semi-democratic, I think, is an exaggeration. Um, as I said, it has the pretense. Let me give you an example. The military dictators in South America found out that it's better to be called El Presidente as opposed to a dictator. So they all changed their names to Mr. President or the President. And they held elections. But in, in substance and in procedures, it was not democratic. Therefore, it's in names only. But in Iran, they have, as, as I just told you, they have debates. They have uh, major voices within the system uh, expressing their discontent or dismay with government, but not with the regime. So it is not democratic. It's a closed circuit republic. And therefore, within Islamic jurisprudence, it is an election that is held and it is a, a closed circuit. So do the Iranian people have other options to, um, to boycott or to vote for a seventh candidate that's not on the ballot or anything else? This is a tough question. Look, uh, if I, I were living in Iran, let's say I was born and raised uh, in the past 37 years in Iran, and I was um, a citizen, a young or a middle-aged man, uh, looking at the candidates, thinking, uh, what shall I do? What can I do? And I think that historically, we have tried from the eighth government with uh, Khatami to today. We have they have tried or we have tried a lot of different strategies. The question is, what alternatives do you have, you are asking me? And from the way people have participated in the elections and they, the way they have come out and voted for various uh, candidates, you can see that to them, um, in order to basically make a difference in their daily lives, in other words, if the government that is to be elected is to make a difference in their lives, then they have to do this calculus of risk and benefit of each candidate or each wing of the same party, the Hezbollah party, meaning the party of God, not Hezbollah in, in, um, in, in Lebanon, then they calculate and decide, well, maybe it's better to vote for Rouhani than Raisi or um, for Kalibov as opposed to Raisi or for Raisi as opposed to uh, Rouhani. That becomes the question of uh, a major question, not only for Iranians, but also in America, we have seen that in the last election in the United States, you had to decide whether to vote for one of the two candidates. Now, I'm not comparing the system, but I'm just saying to you, in order to be pragmatic and in order to think uh, strategically or vote strategically, then you may have to deal with the candidates you have. And therefore, it explains the level of participation in Iranian elections. And you know, at the end of the day, I, <clears throat> and you know, at the end of the day, Ayatollah Khamenei takes advantage of the numbers and the participation, and considers the participation a referendum to support the regime. How do you uh, think that goes? What's your idea on? And you know the. <clears throat> And you also know that Ayatollah Khamenei usually takes advantage of the participation and the numbers and considers the elections a referendum to support the regime. Khamenei is, is correct to claim that participation is the major measure of legitimacy and that people have participated, we have had debates, we have had discussions, we have had public discourse. At the end of the day, every citizen will have to think do I have a candidate in this election, but am I going to get more opportunity to get a job, better education, to uh, stabilize the economy, solve the bank banking problem, take care of the water situation or uh, pollution? At the end of the day, it's about policy. And I think Iranian people have become pragmatic in that way. And they choose among the candidates that are available to them. Um, we have this uh, expression in international relations, you deal with the government that you have, not the, with the governments that you wish to have. In other words, you become pragmatic and utilitarian. 
And I think that explains it. It's not because the elections are democratic. It's not because people don't know it's not democratic. Globalization have, has made it possible so that the people around the world follow each other's elections, as you see. Therefore, I, I think they know, but they have become pragmatic. Your choices were to, at the end of the day, realistic choices were to vote for Hillary or Donald Trump. And someone who is even discontent and doesn't like either one will have to calculate whether or not one candidate is better than the other. I think the same goes uh, for the Iranian election. Professor Aram Hassami from Montgomery College in Maryland.